I've been asked to do a second video. This one regarding the filtering of my pond. You're looking at a large reason for the water clarity of this pond. It's the plants. Everybody knows that plants will love certain minerals. Gases. Nitrogen. Phosphates. Nitrates. Well, the fish waste definitely provide that. And the plants, they absorb it better than any man-made filters that I know of. At least at the hobby level. So, the entire design of this pond is where can I get plants to grow optimally and what kind? This is a bog with pitcher plants. It's a six inch thick layer of peat and 50% coarse sand. Sitting above the liner, which is below the water level, the water level just completely saturates that area. Thus, it's removing any nutrients that are in the water. Waterfalls. They help take ammonia out of the water, turn it into a gas, and letting it dissipate from the water. As well as carbon dioxide. This little waterfall over here. All the water has to come through this entire green area up top in order to get to that section. It's not a lot of water, but I guarantee you whatever's coming out there is very, very clean. All the moss on the sides, the fairy lilies, their roots. And that comes over another little form. Again, more air exchange. That comes right by the lilies. I miss fertilizing my lilies. I'm a couple weeks behind. All of that greenery from the bottom right hand corner of the screen up to that waterfall. That's all forget me not. Growing in my stream. That's a lot of plants to be absorbing nutrients out of the water. These irises, they're both just growing in the water. You can see how large those are. Takes a lot of food in order to grow plants that large. <coughs> Excuse me. All this Creeping Charlie I've talked about before. Those rocks look like they're the edge of the pond. They're not. The water is allowed to go behind there. It runs in against these small rocks as well as this pool of bellis. Every plant that's in the water is helping to absorb the waste from the fish and convert it into energy, cleaning the water. Another waterfall doing the same thing. The 
all this black tar. It's in the water. There's all the forget me nuts I was just talking about. If you had to buy that, it's probably a thousand dollars worth. But it does not take long for it to accumulate to that point. You got your duckweeds. And even a little bit of hair algae. I have some other plants in there. I found them along the stream as well. And then there's the waterfall and the bog. That main bog. Let's get my fingers. It's 20 feet long, 8 feet wide, 7 feet deep. We're a 3 inch line feeds the bog from the pump pushes the water up to the bog and it pushes the water down to the bottom of the bog into a center feed which then disperses the water across the bog the water then comes up through a layer of three to four inch stone to a layer of uh, about four inches, four to six inches of one to two inch stone. And then there's about 24 inches, 24 to 30 inches of stone, three quarter river rock. All the rock is rounded, it's all river rock. That way it does not hold back the waste that is absorbed into the bog. It's meant to slow the waste down, get trapped, get broken down, and then flushed out. I also do have a shower, a baku shower. I have a line going to that two inch that feeds the top of the shower. The showers are very good at oxygenating the water and also breaking up any nitrates and ammonia. But I'm using, mainly using it for uh, oxygen. That is then dumping into the top of the snorkel, giving as much oxygen inside the lower part of the bog as possible. So that way the bacteria can really thrive. This area right here, all these plants are in the lower bog. It's a pea stone bog. It's two inch PVC pipe being fed by a two inch PVC flex pipe. And it's broken into a trident three, three times. They're eight foot long and they're buried underneath three-quarter inch gravel. Again, river rock gravel. The roots to these plants are, I am, I'm sure, completely wrapped around those pipes. It amazes me any water's coming out of there at all, but it is. I don't know how much it's been cut back, but the pump's only a 500 gallon an hour pump to begin with. So it's not seeing a lot of water, but it's plenty to get the plants thriving. I believe it's even out of season for this to be budding. Don't know, it's the first time I've had the arrow. This bog was completely overrun with mint. This is mint. If you see any mint in your pond, 
get it out of there. It does grow very fast. It is easy to remove, but it's impossible to completely remove. You'll find springs that are popping up probably for years. So, after all the water is filtered by those two bugs that runs the gauntlet down this stream through all this forget-me-nots where it then drops into the upper pond. The upper pond has two waterfalls. The one waterfall right here. Not a lot of filtering going on. But the second one is through all that. All the pennywort and pickleweed Goes back down into the pond where there are two main drains at the bottom. And you're looking at the rocks down below there, that's through six feet of water. There's two main drains, they take the water, they bring it into the garage, into this corner of the garage, where it's then pumped all the way back. To the bog. And it just keeps going round and round. There is also the negative edge in the intake bay. That's the opening to the intake bay where the white fish just came in. That's also where I can catch the fish. I could never catch the fish, they were bringing so much that I actually built this area for that reason. This whole area in the picture, plus that, is strictly built to catch the fish. I'll throw food in this area, the fish come in to eat, I'll close off that little section right there with a net, and I can catch the fish. But once the water hits this negative edge, or vanishing edge, there's another two inch line down below there, which goes again to the main pump. And that is pushed up to the main bug. So the system just keeps going round and round. This year's problem is babies. I have so many baby fish, it is mind boggling. They are everywhere. Saying I have a hundred is being generous. I'm sorry, it's not generous, it's being stingy. They are everywhere. Is the bog the perfect solution? Maybe not. It's working really well for me. I would like to put some kind of mechanical filter on there, like uh, a filter pad where I can take some of the heavier debris out every now and then. I really don't have something on the pond like that right now, but I have a few ideas. I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy ponding.